Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the Boat Gang. Uh, I got the TFL Small Bolt on the block, on the block. Uh, this is a second hand boat, okay? I'm the second owner to have this boat. So uh, I wanna show you guys the boat. We'll go through the boat, make sure everything's working properly. Uh, I gotta actually check the cooling and we gotta grease the drive line. I got a little trick to show you guys. If you have a, a bore on your coupler that's too large for your motor or your flex cable, I got a little trick that may help you get alignment, okay? So so the boat's not, you know, you know the collet's not wobbling and uh, super loud okay so uh stick around big b with that okay let's see thing is freaking boss okay um tfl small boat um let's let's go over the outside the exterior of the boat uh the boat is it's not light by no means I, I just weighed it up it weighs 482 grams just the hull and motor and esc okay if you put like uh the 850s or the 1300 is pushing 600 grams okay so she's not a light boat by no means all fiberglass okay it's uh actually marketed as like a reinforced hydroplane okay micro hydroplane um got nine trips on the side a nice angle for the nine trips up front here and it actually ran really good considering the boat doesn't have a turn fin okay you see that had uh dr jet had actually tried a turn fin on the boat he said the boat just wanted to flip you know when you any input in a turn it just kind of flip over it's a cool looking little boat and i think it's discontinued but i actually found a place that still has them sterling kit online okay sterlingkit.com i think has a few of these available I'll, I'll include a link in the description if you guys are interested um it's a cool it's a cool little boat okay consider you know how heavy it is it's actually really fast with this little 2040 brushless inner runner motor all right it's got a little 2040 in here uh flex cable okay flex cable is actually two piece it's a you know typical of a tfl boat they use a two piece with a square drive on your stub shaft okay uh i actually on the pre-mating i ran a 27 millimeter prop and it looks like it must have hit something right there on the leading edge right there on the tongue so i have to fix that i got some 30 millimeter or 32 we'll try on it um it just uses velcro for the battery okay and it's got like a little generic 30 amp esc it looks like an old hobby king or maybe a fly color 30 and i'm running an stx2 in the boat okay um there's a lot of cooling line in this little thing okay a lot of cooling line all right and um you know if i i actually ran it and the temperatures were cool okay but we're gonna hook up the water bottle to it here in a minute check the cooling flow okay I actually before i took it out i had to put a little spring right here because that line right there was kinked okay but um the temperatures were cool all right so what i want to do with this boat all right what i what my plan is is to put a bigger motor in it okay we're going to put this 2440 4500 kv in this boat not sure the kv of this motor so we'll have to you know maybe it's written up under the cooling jacket we'll pull the cooling jacket when we take the collar and all that off but uh, i want to put this 2440 in the boat okay make it a little screamer all right we're going to run it on 1300 or the 850 uh this 2200 will actually fit in the boat but it's like pushing 700 grams with this battery <laughs> it's a heavyweight boat um and i want to put this 2040 in my rigger my micro rigger okay the challenge is up so i can i can power this little boat up okay i'm gonna put that 2040 in here i can put a bigger battery in the boat now the challenge is over i've already got a 30 amp esc in here it's ready for that 2040 okay it's like a, a godsend <laughs> so we're gonna put this in there later on but first i just want to get a baseline with the boat let you guys see how it runs in its stock form then we'll start to upgrading and all that make it scream later on okay um so let's hook the cool let's hook the water up to it to the cooling line here and just see how much flow we have uh out the boat in its stock form i've actually got some cooling line right here if we need to replace any of it or shorten some of the cooling run up we may do that okay so uh let's get to it let's get to it so i got my cooling bottle here filled up with water uh let's check the flow i just did it a while ago and um you actually have to put a little bit of pressure on the bottle to get some flow okay so i'm gonna let gravity go all right just a little trickle with with just the gravity from the bottle okay and i'm gonna give it a little squeeze got some flow coming out uh 
man, for like a 1300 or 850 milliamp battery, that might be okay. But if we're uh, if we're gonna push it up to like a 2200 milliamp pack, we may need to work on the cooling on the boat. <laughs> got some oomph for what it is and i was just looking at this okay um this cooling line is the exit all right you see the exit right here so the exit line actually needs to be on the higher part of the motor jacket okay the forward part so we actually need to pull this jacket and flip it around so that the exit's coming out of this one and the intake is cooling in this one it's actually backwards all right, that might speed up the flow. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Why not? Why not? All right, so let's take this off. Take this one off. Okay, so that's going out the boat. That's actually the exit. So we're going to spin this cooling jacket around. While we're doing that, let's see if the motor has any numbers on it. And I don't see any, so I'll have to look it up, tell you what KV it is. So I actually spin it around. Okay, now the exit is on the forward part of the jacket like it should be. That way the, the, the intake's here, fills the can up with water. The can's completely full when uh, the, the water dumps out this forward nipple. Okay, so we'll plug it back in. This one right here. This one's coming from the ESC into the jacket. All right fills up the water and then out the boat so now let's do the cooling again okay, so i got my cooling line here let's see if that actually helps to flow out it was just backwards on the jacket there so oh wow so that's gravity so that's gravity right there okay so i'm not even pressing on it that's gravity so it does have better flow with that jacket the nipples the cooling line exit switched around all right so i'm gonna give it a push way better all right way better so let's go ahead let's go ahead and pull this collet all right i might need to pull the motor to get it out i don't know okay so i'm gonna go ahead and get that loosened up and everything i'll be back okay so i got you guys in here close all right so i got the collet all cleaned out i took the grub screw out of the the motor side okay so let's see how how tight fitting this coupler is on the shaft all right i got a little trick that actually has uh helped me out in the past getting a coupler in line okay so there's a little bit of movement a little bit of play there all right so this method i'm going to show you sometimes it works sometimes it don't so what i'm going to do is take my blue loctite all right and um, I'm going to line it up on my flat spot on the motor, okay, so I can tighten down my grub screw later on. What I'm going to do is put blue Loctite in the coupler, all right, you know, kind of go crazy with it, okay, just make sure it's all in the coupler on the motor side, all right. Now I'm going to put the coupler on the on the shaft on where the flat spot's at, okay? Like so. And I'm not going to put the grub screw in right now. Let that Loctite harden up before I put my grub screw on. Because what happens when you put your grub screw in on a loose fitting collet, it'll actually like, like, uh, it'll actually like, cock the cop the coupler over to one side when you s s uh, cinch down that grub screw okay so what we're doing is we're putting loctite on the coupler let the loctite dry okay it'll kind of uh create like a little barrier around the shaft that way when we put our our, our grub screw in it won't cock our 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 collet to the side okay it'll have like a little barrier in there you know that loctite dries hard okay once it's dry we put it we cinch down the grub screw and hopefully hopefully it won't like offset our coupler you, you feel me so i'm gonna let it sit there for a minute i actually just spooled it up make sure it was like not wobbling 
lightly okay make sure it's not like out of balance all right so i'm gonna let this sit for about at least 15 minutes minimum okay spin it make sure it's not wobbling before you let it sit there okay because if it if it sits there and it's like on the shaft crooked it's going to dry out on the shaft crooked and then you put your grub screw in it's going to be even worse so uh this just a little trick that i've learned you know sometimes it works sometimes it don't sometimes you have to do it two or three times you guys it's the next day um i apologize for the camera angles this boat's so small <laughs> it's really hard to to video so it's the next day okay um i got my remote here let's plug in a battery i haven't put a grub screw in yet okay i want to check make sure it's um it's spinning in line with the shaft the motor shaft all right before i put the grub screw in so i could show you guys that this this loctite it actually builds up a little barrier around the shaft like i was saying yesterday okay and it actually looks like it's spinning pretty much in line so let's see let me hold the motor down here see that no wobble okay so now let's put the grub screw in there and cross our fingers that I put enough Loctite in in the collet to build up that layer around the shaft and inside the collet so when I put my grub screw in you know it's the Loctite's hardened up and it should it should stay in its place right now okay my grub screws right on a flat spot I made sure of that yesterday before I let it sit okay just kind of tightened up my, gr my grub screw a little bit there and let's check it out now look at that you see that it's not wobbling like it was before so that's a little trick for you guys a little more is not gonna hurt okay all right now let's put the grub screw in there and it should be ironclad we shouldn't have to worry about it wobbling all right so let's slide the flex cable in now all right and you could do the same thing on your flex cable or your drive shaft whatever you're using straight shaft flex cable you could put a little bit of blue loctite in it okay if it's if it's got some play you could put some loctite on the drive shaft shaft side just know if you do that that you're gonna have to heat it up every time you pull it all right and it looks like i got loctite oh that's grease all right so let me actually grease this up real quick all right so i greased up my flex cable really good okay really really good uh, i really don't want to have to put a lot of like torque on this grub screw to keep my flex cable in place so i'm kind of i got a little dot of blue loctite in there to help retain my flex cable all right and that's uh I, I'm not gonna have to pull this flex cable every time I take my boat out. Okay, this this flex cable system here, uh, you know, I should be able to just maybe drop a little drop of oil here, you know, and uh, you know, let let her dig. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of rely on the Loctite in my coupler right here to retain the cable. Okay, and just kind of cinch down my grub screw, uh, you know, ever so tightly you know just kind of lightly lightly cinch it down so let's see how it sounds okay I, keep in mind i need to tighten my motor up here i'm gonna hold it tight here night and day look at that night and day you guys see that all right so i just put my little flex driver in there this thing's a great tool to have on hand they're cheap and they save a lot of time you guys see that all right that's your little stub shaft with the square end okay all right so i'm just going to put a little bit of grease on it i was going to use oil but might as well use grease i got it taken apart okay let's put some inside the, the strut here all right and put it back together keep as much grease in there as we can all right boom done okay it's ready to go it's ready to roll 
So I've actually got some three-in-one oil that I've actually mixed grease in with, okay? Like wheel bearing grease. So while I got it apart, just gonna put a little drop in there, might as well. So I guess it's four in one oil now. Huh. Now let's see what it sounds like with the strut on. Uh, I actually had to take a little bit off the cable. I'm talking about like a millimeter or two, top two, two millimeters tops. Okay, what I think, what I think was happening when I put this strut on. All right, it lined up to the holes perfect, but when I when I would turn the boat on and, and spin it up, it was really loud, just like before. Like I hadn't even you know fixed the boat, like I hadn't even been working on it. All right, really loud. So I went out and took my cable down like a millimeter, two millimeters tops. It wasn't even two millimeters. And now listen to it. Much better. Much better. All right, so look at the collet. No wobble, no wobble in the collet. I need to cut that down. No, no wobble in the in the stuffing tube or the flex cable. Excuse me. All right, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna take her out for a run. Her maiden, her actual maiden. Okay, I had done a pre-maiden with Javier. Now it actually sounds like a boat, okay, not a little dirt bike. It's still a little bit loud, but nowhere near as loud as it was before. And the driveline has some room to flex and contract, you know, without binding up on each other. Okay, what I think was happening, this stub shaft was binding up on that long flex cable. I mean, it needs a good joint, okay? You got a square drive and a square drive, so it needs to be joined properly. Uh... You know, there needs to be enough cable in that square drive so it's not going to slip. But if it's too tight, you'll have some binding. Man, that's nice. That is so much smoother. Uh, we'll have the maiden on the next video. This video is really long. I wasn't anticipating this long video, but you guys know me. I, I don't know how to cut down to the chase. I don't know how to cut to the chase. So. We'll see you next time. Big B with Ironclad RC.